Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guy, Colin, and today's another video in the 5-Minute Logic Expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today, we're talking all about EQ. Now, if I could teach you one thing about mixing, it would be that you have to get your individual volume set right. That is such an important part of the mixing process, and a lot of people skip past it. But if I could teach you two things about mixing, the second is 100% EQ. It is the most powerful tool we have in mixing in terms of shaping our sound to sound honed and professional and get everything to fit together. Everything in the mixing process is important, but EQ is definitely the most powerful tool, at least in my opinion and my experience, and I think a lot of people's. But a lot of people feel like EQ is very complicated and confusing, when in reality, it's actually a very simple tool. There's only really two things you can do with an EQ, and we only really have three goals with an EQ. So our three goals are to minimize the bad, things that we don't like the sound of, highlight the good, things that we do like the sound of, or that help the sources cut through in the mix, and make space for all of our sources. And I put that one last because I think a lot of people hear that and that sounds appealing and like cool about mixing but making space for every source is often a lot more simple than people realize and should be your third goal so minimize the bad highlight the good help things cut through the mix and make space for every source and we can only do that by boosting or cutting so in this video i want to help you simplify eq so that you really feel empowered to use eq uh, and highlight how you can accomplish those three goals as simply as possible let's jump straight into logic and take a look at the eq and start walking through its features so here we have logic stock eq and the first First thing you should notice here is that it says 20 on the left side all the way up to 20k or 20,000 on the right side and this is the frequency range so 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz on the left side you want to think of it kind of like the bass on your car stereo this is the super low end in the middle we have like the mids on your car stereo and then on the far right side this is like the treble in your car stereo so start by thinking of it really broadly in those three terms we have bass mids and treble and when it comes to actually using our eq there's only two things we can do we can boost or we can cut so let's listen i'll show you some examples of how we can boost and cut so this is just some drums here and the first way we can boost is with a bell and this is just going to boost at a specific frequency range in a bell shape can you guess why they named it that? The second is a shelf. And this is gonna boost from here all the way up, or if we're doing a low shelf, from here all the way down. Those are the only two ways that we can boost. When, we can, when we're cutting, we have three ways that we can cut. So with a cut, we can do a bell for the cut, where we're cutting a specific frequency range in a bell shape. We could do a shelf, where we're cutting from here all the way up. Or we can do a filter, and this is gonna cut from here all the way down, or if we're doing a high cut filter, it's gonna cut from here all the way up and just give you kind of like the lower stuff in the source. So those are the only three moves that you really have. A filter that's gonna cut everything out from a certain point and below. We have a bell that's gonna boost or cut at a specific frequency range, or we have a shelf that's gonna boost all the way from here up or from here down or cut all the way from up, here up or here down. So as you're going through your sources, you just need to determine, is there something in the bass, the mids or the treble that I don't like? And then if so, I'm gonna cut it. Most likely it's gonna be with a bell. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be with a bell. Is there something that I need to cut out completely to make space for other sources? Or is there something that I need to highlight to help it cut through the mix or just sound the way that I want it to? In which case you're gonna be doing that with a boost, either a bell or a shelf. And that's really all that you can do. And then the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is the frequency analyzer. What we're actually seeing in the background of our EQ. What is this telling us? Well, it's telling us how much of those frequencies do we have. That's kind of obvious, right? Something that's cool to know that I didn't know for a long time is those specifically correlate to different frequencies. So if you were like going up the piano scale, you would see those spiking up as it moves up the EQ. As you go up the piano scale, you're gonna see it move up on the EQ as well. Now, with something like drums like we have here, what you see, the big thing is what's called the fundamental, like here, every time that snare hits, you're gonna see what's called the fundamental, which is the lowest pitch. And if I wanna add fullness to that snare, I'm gonna boost around that fundamental. Everything above that in terms of the snare is gonna be the harmonics above it, which is additional parts of the sound, but it's not where the big fullness element of that sound is gonna come from. Same thing with that kick drum. When you see that kick drum come in here, you'll see that there's nothing and then all of a sudden the kick hits up and it's right around here that we have the fundamental of that kick drum. If you wanna really thin something out, you can cut around the fundamental. So if I wanted to really minimize the fullness of that kick drum, I could just use a low shelf to cut. If I really wanted to get even more of that lowness out of the kick drum, I could do a boost. 
and it's going to boost that fundamental and the fullness of that kick drum. So that's really what you're seeing there. Now, there's other parts of the sound that continue up, as I said, in harmonics above that fundamental that make up the sound of the kick drum. But be aware of where the fundamental of whatever it is that you're EQing is so that you're not necessarily cutting into it if you want it to be fuller. Or if it's too full, you can go there. That can be kind of your starting point for maybe cutting some of it out to clean it up in the context of your mix. Okay, so that's EQ. That's a really broad scale look at EQ. If you want to go further with EQ, I've included a little EQ cheat sheet in my six step checklist to a pro mix. It's a completely free checklist that just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have. And EQ is a really big part of it. So there's a little EQ cheat sheet built into it. It's completely free from link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Have you been using EQ or do you find it confusing or overwhelming? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always curious how people feel about these tools. I know this one held me back for a long time. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow where we're taking a look at Logic's vintage EQs. One thing at a time.